Happiness is just a idea. It's not what's relevant. Let's dabble into other types of spiritual practices that work only with the shadow side of ourselves or that are like real and sincere and serious and actually lead to something. Well, yes, and happiness is a real thing. It still is. That's the good news. Huh? Happiness is a very real thing and it's very manageable, actually. It's very achievable. It's very discoverable. We just have to look in the right places. We have to know how to understand existence. That's really all we need to do. And it's not that hard. It's not that difficult, especially now that I'm here and the academy is here. So I make it easy on you guys. I had to figure this all out, you know, it took me many years, but hey, here you go. So it's not that hard when you know how to go about it. It's really not that difficult. So I am this. Can everyone feel that? Just feel that. Even if you don't fully believe it anymore, just feel I am this, just a sense of it. And if you really can't feel it anymore, just tap into the memory of it if you can. What does it feel like to feel like I am this? To I, I am small, basically. It's another way of saying it. I am limited. I am fragile. Many people feel that they're very fragile, especially women. Absolutely no offense, but because their body makeup is somewhat more fragile and they don't have as much of that, usually not all the time, they tend to feel more fragile physically speaking. So you can tap into that too. Just tap into the sense of that. And as a guy, you may feel fragile in many different ways. Just feel the sense of fragility and maybe sense the walls that you've put up around yourself to protect yourself. In the case of someone feeling physically fragile, that strong, seemingly strong, but really very weak mental barrier of, I know who I am. I know what I stand for. I know what I want. I know what I deserve. Feel that tension. Feel that harshness that wants to protect you from the sense of being fragile. Just feel your personal makeup for a moment. Just feel very truthfully, very in a very exposed kind of way, just sense how you've created the sense of being a person inside of an alien universe that is dangerous and where you have to be careful at every turn. In every relationship, you have to be wary. You have to make sure nobody crosses your boundaries, to make sure nobody wants to abuse you. Feel the tensions that you've built up around this sense of being limited and small. It's perfectly all right. Just sense them. The clearer you can feel them, the more easily you can see that you're not it. So right there and then, you've already transcended that whole chunk of conditioning. Instead of looking through it, being sort of unconscious or semi-conscious, many people are semi-conscious of it, and then continue to live your life like that, sort of like bumping into things still thinking you're kind of aware, but you're also kind of like eh. semi-aware. It's such a fun thing to be semi-aware of your personality, but become really aware of your personal creation, the construct that you've created to operate, to function, to be safe inside of this paradigm of I am this versus that. Feel the barrier, feel the tension, feel the separation, feel that it is a construct of consciousness, of mind. See it as an energetic sort of spectrum or barrier or picture whatever it looks like to you, but see that it is a construct, a very flimsy sort of construct. It stands on a very weak leg. It's very dependent on other people confirming that construct. Because if they don't, then really, it's a really sort of fragile system. So we've surrounded our sense of fragility with a very fragile counter system. Let's feel into that, see how you're operating like that when you feel I am this. Doesn't feel too pleasant, does it? Unless you're aware of it, then it feels kind of joyful, doesn't it? Maybe you're a little sad about it. Maybe you're still a little attached, attached to it, but you can see now that that has been a creation and actually you're free of it already simply by bringing it into full awareness, giving it full space, having that sort of earnestness that you need on the way of self-realization, the des desire or the willingness to discover what's true from what's not true. And again, from that sense of being identified with the personality, it can sometimes seem threatening to take the way of self-realization, precisely because the fragility in you has become identified with the fragility counterpart or protective shell in you. And so its sense of safety is sort of standing on those two false senses of self. Nevertheless, from that point of view only, if that's all you know yourself to be, if that's all you're aware of, then you don't want to give that up because it's all that you know to keep you safe. It's all that you know how to operate in this world of separation and limitation and smallness. But if you realize that, you can conjure up the willingness, the desire to actually investigate and to actually come to the truth of this moment and the truth of who you are and who you're not, what you are and what you're not. So many people, 
that are still identified with this fragility, this sense of I am this inside of a world that can harm me and hurt me and come at me. They sort of avoid the way of self-realization or the simply, in other words, the ability to stay with something, an attention span, shall we say. Because the beautiful thing that everyone knows instinctively about having attention span is that it will kill everything that's false automatically. You don't really have to know how to do that. If you have an attention span, which is another way of saying the ability or the desire, not the ability because you all have the ability, but the desire to actually stay with one thing for a moment and not just go all over the place. Something in you knows that the whole structure you've created will fall apart. It needs constant distraction in order to feel safe. Something that's absolutely not safe, in order to make that feel safe, you must constantly distract yourself. So if you don't for a moment, if you remain quiet, if you remain with this moment, and you ignore everything that you have become for just half an hour straight as an exercise, you don't have to do this many times, just do it whenever you desire to do it. And you will see that as you stay with what's true right here, right now, this moment, you stay in that sense of consciousness, that sense of I am. Not I am this, I am that, I need to do that. I am undisturbed right here, right now. It will eliminate many, many layers of a false constructs. It can be a little scary, but it's not really because the presence you discover, the stability you discover is that much more reliable, is actually that much more desirable than feeling sort of flimsy and pretending that it's safe, pretending that you know who you are, pretending that you're a strong person. It's much more reliable and solid to actually not be a strong person at all. Because then your sense of identity shifts from the fragility of the self-made construct that is bound to disappear. In fact, it already doesn't exist even while you think it does. The personality never really existed in that sense. Those walls never really existed. And when you discover this, the I am starts shining forth into your experience more and more. And the I am, what is the I am? The I am is the isness that makes up this, that makes up my brain, that makes up your brain, that makes up the space in between us. Everything that is, is, no? Can you see that everything that is, is? There's a major clue right there. Everything that is, is. Get it? Confirmation of enlightenment right there. Very simple. You don't need a teacher, not really. Not for presence, at least. When you want to discover presence, all you need is to notice that everything is present. It's very simple. It's very effortless. And it doesn't require you to work yourself through all kinds of meditations. It just becomes obvious confirmation. Instead of seeking confirmation with a teacher for presence, when it comes to presence, you notice that, hey, this is. I am. She is. He is. That insult is. My reaction to that is. Love is, hatred is, war is, peace is, life is, animals are, everything is. And you just start noticing that everything is. And it sort of overwhelms you. At some point it can overwhelm you a little bit. When you're still identified with the person, when the person then sort of penetrates its own bubble and isness starts leaking into its bubble of experience, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But only because you have set up parameters as to who you are. Presence cannot be overwhelming if you're not limited to a particular parameter or location. So it's only initially that you can have a sense of, whoa, I'm going to explode. And in a sense, you can always have that, but it's always at a new level. What, wherever your edge is, wherever it expands you, that's where you feel like, oh, I am about to explode. But it's only because your bubble keeps breaking up and expanding and expanding. And in that way, you actually become more of all that is. Your consciousness, that you that recognizes I am right now as I speak to you, that very consciousness will expand and become more of all that is. So the I am practice is very helpful in that initial expansion from the person to the presence that is everything that is. So as soon as you awareness, let's say in your initial phase, awareness that has become the sense I am this, the personality, the being, the person beingness, as soon as the person beingness starts to wake up to presence beingness, that is sort of, in a sense, on the threshold here, on the edge of where the I am this touches the I am. And the more you touch in with the I am presence, and the less you start to believe that I am this, the more, in a sense, you could say that line or your consciousness starts to shift or expand. So it's just right here on the edge of the individual self, or the personality consciousness, 
and the presence consciousness.